My name is Patricia Marfura McTaggart. My country is Malvian, near the Daly River in the Northern Territory. This story is about our rivers and our bush tucker. Collecting bush tucker is important. It gets people out on country. It is healthy for us and makes us feel good. Collecting bush tucker heals our spirit and teaches young people about country and culture. Dad used to tell us stories about dream time stories or about a country, you know. Our mom used to tell us stories about her dreaming. And they used to, we used to take that fish net over at a creek where there were lots of fish. The Mabo decision in 1992 means that our customary laws are now recognized. This means that our use of land and water is protected. But when decisions about water are being made, we are often not included. Those rivers, creeks and billabongs are important to us. We rely on those places for food and medicines. Other people say they need water for their businesses, such as farming and cattle. But no one has really talked to us about how important those water places are for hunting and fishing practices. Well, the national water policy of 2004, the National Water Initiative it's called, um, for the first time in Australia's history recognised the importance of water to Aboriginal societies. And it actually urges Australian state governments to include Aboriginal people in water planning, to understand their water use requirements, and to consider the impacts of water use decisions on their societies, their economies and their culture. We haven't had a lot of information about how people use aquatic environments. We haven't had a lot of information about the value of those environments to Aboriginal people. And there's been very little understanding of the way in which changes to water use and water management in a wider Australia may affect Aboriginal people. So CSIRO, as part of the Tropical Rivers and Coastal Knowledge Research Program, looked at how changing water uses may affect my community in the daily as well as communities in the Fitzroy River in Western Australia. So you went somewhere Sunday? Saturday. So it's really about building relationships and trust from the beginning. And that drive came from the Indigenous communities themselves. 82 households were interviewed eight times a year. People were asked about when they went fishing or hunting, where they went and what they caught. Very Monday, nose turtle. Catfish. The researchers also wanted to know about country and the seasons. That one Christmas come, this one in year round for eating. This one now they're drying up. This one year round, like that one in Bengal or Billabong. Seasonal calendars were made with four different language groups. They are based on Aboriginal knowledge of the plants and animals harvested throughout the year. Where, where do you get that one from, Kitty? Uh, this information was collected to get a better picture of how and when food is collected during the year and how we read the different signs of animals and plants. In the middle of the dry season, mm -hmm. we've got people going out and catching five turtles at a time. Uh, Non-Indigenous people have four seasons. We are people of many seasons. And um, the best time is the dry season or when you go and hunt and forage for these th things that are in the water or billabongs or the creeks. My calendar, the Nanga seasons, was the first. It follows the life stages of Wurmui, the local spear grass. From the time, it, like, from the new shoot up till when it's died off and like burnt, all in between that cycle of the spear grass, we hunt for like certain different things to eat. When the wormwood stalks start to die and turn a reddish colour, Ahuri, the black rock kangaroo, sings the wind from the east. 
The wind brings the dragonfly, who tells you it's a good time for freshwater prawn and barramundi. When the wind, like from that direction coming, then we know it's time to go and look for barramundi. As soon as that happens, like we can feel it, uh, it's telling us dry seasons here, no? and we see signs of like dragonflies coming at like, the same time with the wind, and it's telling us that the dry season is here and there's going to be a bit more fish in the river. As the billabong levels drop during the dry season, plants can be collected along the edges. These include Minimindi, the water lily, Mewulngini, the lotus lily, and Mirigod, the water chestnut. This is also the time for Mibuimari, the bush banana, and Migurum, the native peanut. And you brush them up, pinny, take them out, you eat them like nut, peanut. Yeah. This one, medicine for pneumonia and all that. Red capo flowers tell us that freshwater crocodiles have laid their eggs. We can go collect them. Bark peeling off the ghost gums tells us bull sharks are fat and ready to be hunted in the rivers. And with less water, it is much easier to collect mussels and crabs from the banks of billabongs and creeks. And it's not just the things that live in the water. There are other things that are growing by the banks and stuff like berries and plums and bulbs. And uh, it's because of, uh, you know, after the rain, um, there's other things that are growing around the riverbanks as well, and in the billabongs. By the late dry season, most of our hunting trips are to the billabongs. As the water levels drop, the muddy banks are exposed. Plenty of long-necked turtles can be found hibernating under the mud. We use digging sticks to find them. Long-necked turtles are our favorite food. They make up over half of the food we collect in the Daly River. Researchers compared the value of our bush food, such as turtle, to the foods we buy from the store. If farming were to change the way the river flows, there could be less animals to hunt, and it would cost our families a lot more to buy food. During the wet season, the daily floods, and the river is too high to fish. I like going fishing for anything like brim, barramundi, pig nose turtle, catfish, or the shark. I like eating shark. So you were fishing yesterday? Yes. Catch anything? My turtle and my other cousin's sister, she called eight brim and she brought it back for her family to feed them. At the end of the wet, when the river is high, fruit like mimeli, the black currant, and miritramoy, the white currant, are collected. Echidna and rock python are hunted. So we found that people are sharing resources on a very broad scale. So you have family groups going out hunting and fishing, they're bringing some back to their own household, but a lot is being distributed very widely, not only within the community, but with communities further upstream and downstream. And there's also a bit of a um, resource exchange going on. So some communities might be able to get magpie goose eggs, for example, and they're flying them up to another community who is exchanging them with turtle to another community. So this has really important repercussions and implications for water resource managers. They need to be thinking about making planning or the implications of water allocation decisions on not just a specific community, but on a much broader geographic scale. If food currently caught from the river and floodplains had to be replaced with supermarket food, there would be less money for us to spend on other things. Very often, the um, water needs that Aboriginal groups have can be quite different to other groups. 
So if, other, if, if groups like recreation fishers and conservation groups and farmers are the ones that are only, their interests are only reflected in water use decisions, then we will see that Aboriginal people miss out and we may see some quite harmful decisions that aren't in the best interests of Aboriginal people. So will you take some of this and put it out? In the Billabong, where Billabong. there's Salvinia? Yeah. With these results, researchers can work out which are the most valuable plants and animals. And people will catch, catching them and uh, eating them. And the important places for hunting and fishing. They can look at how changes in using water may upset things. If farmers take too much water during the dry season, this could be a problem for important fish, such as black brim and barramundi. These two fish are important to Aboriginal people. Nearly 1,000 black brim and barramundi were caught during the time when the researchers were doing the surveys. This information is important for water planning because development of water resources, for example, building dams for farms, can be a big problem for the river flows. We now have information water planners can use to work out how changes in water use may affect Aboriginal people. First activities that we did with people in the communities was river use mapping. It provides a strong and important base for decisions about water use. The river is like the heart. The creeks and the springs that run into it uh, are like the veins in our body and uh, that feeds the river, especially in the dry season. And of course the springs come from the aquifer. If people drain the aquifer out to farm and all that, it'll kill the river and kill the things that are the marine life in the water as well. If farming or other water use does increase in the Daly River catchment, for example, over the next 10 or 20 years, we'll be able to look back at this data and water planners will be able to look back at this information and say, well, 10 years ago, this was how people were using the country and they were collecting these kinds of resources in these kinds of quantities. If those patterns are still evident 10 or 20 years time, then we will know that water use activity has not had any detrimental impact on Aboriginal people. So it's a very important baseline for helping decision makers in the future be confident that the water decisions they've made, that the water use plans they have, the water use allocation regimes are indeed reflecting the interests and needs of Aboriginal people to continue their subsistence resource use. For thousands of years, Aboriginal people have used these waterways and continue hunting and fishing practices to this day. It is vital that kids also have the opportunity to learn how to hunt and fish these places. It is really important that we document how we use the rivers as it shows other people the connection Aboriginal people have with water places. Working closely with Mother Earth and we work together to try and she provides us with food and then we got to, in return we look after her by not doing anything that's not pleasing her. To make these important water decisions we need to work together with other water users including farmers to make sure the plants and animals are protected and our traditions are preserved. Yeah, yeah.